Hello, everyone. Uh, as usual, please raise your hand virtually and we'll start with English and then move into Serbian. First question for Rim. Hi, Novak. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. I have a couple of questions, if that's okay. First sure. one is, uh, you obviously haven't played since Australia, which is not a typical schedule for you. So I'm wondering, is there any specific adjustments you feel you need to make, whether mentally, physically, anything like that, to feel prepared for the clay season? Well, not in particularly. I mean, I uh, have had some, uh, you know, periods in my career where I didn't play a tournament for maybe a couple of months and then came back. So, I mean, I don't think uh, there is anything uh, special I have to do in terms of preparation in order for me to feel my best on the court. I mean, I've, I've been training training quite a lot on clay, actually, ever since I, you know, pulled out from Miami. I was... Um, you know, I was I was hitting on clay and uh, uh, here in Monte Carlo, actually, where where I reside with the family. So um, it was convenient and feels great. Uh, I feel uh, physically prepared, mentally. I missed I missed tennis, you know, last couple of months that I haven't been competing. So I look forward to my first match. I, uh, it's unfortunate we don't have a crowd, but uh, you know, it's. Uh, <laughs> A common thing nowadays, but hopefully, hopefully uh, we'll be seeing crowd very very soon on big tournaments uh, in Europe. Okay, Nicola wants us to ask one question, so maybe he'll circle back when everyone asks. Thanks. Thank you. No, no, Rim, go ahead now, but in the future, please just keep to one question each. But you're the exception now. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate. A bonus. Uh, Thank you. I'm I'm wondering if. Um, if you were surprised at all but by the news that Tony Nadal is coaching Felix and if you ever imagine seeing Marianne Vaida, for example, coaching someone else on tour while you're still playing. <laughs> uh, hard to imagine at this moment that Marianne would be coaching someone else while I'm still playing. Um, but look, uh, Rafa and Tony uh, are not traveling and working together for, for a few years now already. So, uh, you know, Tony was probably looking for a new challenge and it, it honestly did not surprise me too much. I know Felix has spent quite a bit of time in the last couple of years in uh, Rafa's academy uh, training and uh, getting an advice and mentorship from, from Tony when he was there. So, uh, you know, Tony probably... Uh, was excited to to explore you know a new project a new sort of say adventure on the on the tour with uh, one of the best young tennis players on the in, in the world at the moment and Felix is a great guy someone that uh, has uh, hard working ethics which is something that is very important for Tony and you know I wish them all the best it's it's nice to see Tony on the tour obviously he's He's had his his mark uh, with with Rafa for so many years, and uh, you know I, I I feel like he can only bring positives to to Felix's game and and just mindset. Isabel. Yes. Um, hi, Novak. Um, as you said, you live here. It's it's your uh, everyday um, training camp, if I can say. How how is it to see the club almost as it is in your everyday life? I mean, different from from the tournament. Usually, will, will you feel different yes. when you enter the court for your first match? Then, well, it's definitely going to be a different feeling. Uh, this club usually, in in a normal conditions, when we have uh, the crowd allowed to come to the tournament, is transformed uh, a lot. Um, so right now, you don't see that transformation so much. Usually, there. There's a lot of courts that are being uh, transformed into a village or something like that because there's not much space. So they have to use some of the courts for, you know, sponsor tents and stuff like this. And right now, as you don't have crowd, you don't have sponsor people allowed, then it's, you know, there's more courts. So it's, it's better for training, for practice, because, you, you, you know, uh, in, in a normal circumstances, it's, it's always, you know, tricky to get, you know, courts for a lot of players one hour there, an hour here, maybe it's, you know, a lot of players have to share at the beginning of the tournament. But right now I see most of the players are playing, you know, one-on-one -on -one without uh, needing to share because there's, there's plenty of room. Uh, 
the, the positive thing about it, I was actually training with Tsitsipas today and we, we spoke a little bit uh, about that and with Medvedev that it's, it's kind of nice to see that, you know, um, that it's nice to play at home in a way because you, you know, you, you reside in, in uh, you sleep at home uh, in, in, your, in your apartment, which we allow to do, you know, this tournament, which is great. And, uh, uh, and, and play the tournament at the club where you usually come to train and still spend time uh, outdoors walking around the club, which you don't have normally opportunity to do because there's so many people and it's just impossible to walk around. So now you could actually go and check out some training sessions from, from other players or matches and just be outdoor on the, on the fresh air, which... Uh, is something that uh, that we are grateful because for because you know uh, nowadays with with all the bubble and safe environment and restrictions that we, we have to uh, be part of uh, on the tour, it's it's actually nice that that you you get to have some some fresh air. Ubaldo. Uh, ciao, Novak. Uh, uh, I'd like to know, since you said you have been practicing always there, uh, if you had the chance to practice also with Yannick Sinner, who could be uh, possibly your opponent uh, uh, in, in which will be your first round, and if you have seen him playing uh, uh, recently on TV or so. Uh, I have uh, practiced a lot with Yannick. Um... In the previous years, I haven't trained with him a lot in the last year and a half uh, because I, I, uh, I, we were just not at the same place at the same time. He's always traveling for tournaments. But before that, in that period of two, three years when he was the junior coming up, uh, we, we trained a lot uh, actually in at uh, Piatti's Academy and also here in Monaco, both hard courts, clay courts. So I have uh, seen his uh, development, so to say, and his his trajectory, his his road to to where he is at the moment, and it's really impressive. I mean, he's a very uh, very nice uh, person. He's uh, working uh, really hard. He's devoted. Um, so he's got he's got all the all the goods that he needs in, in order to, to, to become a champion. So he's, he's in the right way and he's surrounded with uh, very good people from tennis coach, fitness coach, physio. I know all these people, you know, from, from uh, a long time. And Ricardo was my coach as well at the, the uh, first years of my professional career. So he's in good hands. And now, um, you know, uh, let's see, you know, obviously there's, there's a, uh, a lot of a lot of the achievements that I'm sure he wants to achieve in his in his career, as he's uh, pointing out, he is very ambitious. Um, playing finals of Miami was obviously highlight of his career so far, but I think he has been very consistent player actually. Uh, you know, always playing at least quarters or semis of the two fifties or you know five hundred. So that's yeah, he has been very impressive, uh, and and uh, it seems like he's not satisfied with what he has achieved so far. He wants to do more, which is great to see that there's the the hunger in him. Um, we never faced each other in official match, so it would be definitely uh, great to to um, to to play him on clay, and and let's see what happens. George, hi Novak, um, you just answered. Part of my question by saying that you're now able to stay at home this week, which is a unique situation because you're playing at home. Can you expand a little bit on the restrictions and what you're able and not able to do in a case like this one? Well, the, they're constantly changing the rules. You know, uh, ATP has um, put forward the protocol uh, that we have to follow on all the tournaments, regardless of the uh, so to say, regulations of the local authorities and the governments. Uh, and we are in so-called safe environment. I wouldn't call it a bubble because it's not really a bubble, uh, but it is a safe environment, so to say, where they reduce, I guess, the risk of uh, transmission of the virus as much as possible so that uh, I guess all the players would not, you know, that that. The, larger number you wouldn't reach a larger number of players infected that would affect you know greatly the tour and the weeks to follow the the, the specific week right and tournament um but it's great that uh, you know us who are residents here have a chance to sleep at home for sure it's it's we have that housing option 
but you have to you know be in the bubble and 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 uh, basically stay at home and come back come to the to the tennis and have i think they have an hour allowance of exercise outdoors where you can walk around and um, not to the crowded areas i mean i i uh, I'm not exactly sure, let's say, of, of every detail of that rule, but this, what I've told you is what I know. And uh, I just kind of got into the bubble, into the safe environment, sorry, today. So, uh, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't change much for me anyway, uh, since I, I decided not to go into the safe environment uh, earlier. I just did it today because I wanted to, to be free and uh, and, and kind of uh, go around and, and not have the, the restrictions. But from today, anyway, I'm in, in the tournament mode. So, you know, most of the time I'll be spending on, on the courts. Last two questions. Too many. I know that. Um, like, uh, Daniel Medvedev just said that one of the reasons why he doesn't like clay is because he gets dirty and the ball down the ball bounce is irregular. I was wondering like in this era when players play from the baseline and there's not as much serving volume. Um is is playing well on clay as much about kind of the mental side and acceptance as as well as you know the technical aspect differences between clay and hard courts. Yes, you're right. I think uh, clay requires a lot of adjustments and uh, the, yes, the ball bounce is irregular and it's quite unpredictable at times. Um, if, if, the, if the courts are not in a perfect state, which is normal that, you know, if you have rain and wind and different conditions that can affect the condition of the court, then obviously um, mentally you just have to stay out there um, I will use this term grind uh, mentally and physically uh, more than any other surface, I would say, because it's just, um, it can be very frustrating at times because sometimes you just feel like you, you maybe you can't make a winner. You can't make an easy point with your serve like you usually do on the other surfaces. So it requires a tactical uh, and definitely technical adjustment. You know, the positioning on the court has to, vary all the time and uh you know a lot of guys i mean including myself that you know usually attacks the return you know and all other faster surfaces and clay i would probably have be more optional there you know maybe mix it up go go back from deep in the court uh send a looping top spin and then trying to get into the rally so it's 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 very strategic uh, uh, surface that re requires a lot of strategic thinking uh, and, 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 and tactical uh, adjustments, so to say. Uh, yes, you do get dirty, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's necessary, I guess, in, in order to have success in this surface. Last in English for Carol. Hi, Novak. Uh, hey, Carol. Um, I'm just wondering what you are thinking about Roland Garros pushing back the tournament uh, for a week. Is it mattering for your schedule? Do you think it was the right move? What are your thoughts? Uh, it's hard to say I mean, whether it was the right move or not. I mean, I, I, I'm not uh, in the French Federation or the French government to understand what is going on, you know, in Paris and, and, and uh, you know, what are the reasons for that? But, um, you know, obviously these are, these are the things that we just have to accept and, 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 and kind of uh, move on, uh, you know, hoping that the, the tournament will be played in the end of the day, because that's, <laughs> that's what we want. Um, you know, last year was also quite specific because they moved it to October. It was cold. It was the first time that we, got to play French Open in those particular conditions. So this time it's going to be moved only for a week. As I understood, uh, one, of the, one of the main reasons is because there might be um, some <clears throat> a loosening of the restrictions so that the crowd allowance percentage will grow. Uh, hopefully that, that will happen. We are we're, we're all hopeful. I mean, every time you move any tournament for a week, I mean, particularly Grand Slam, it, it messes up with the calendar and the schedule. And uh, that, that's going to be a big challenge for ATP. You know, every time you make, uh, you make that kind of a call, you have to see how that impacts 
the entire tour and it impacts it affects many tournaments in many weeks not just in that particular week but also what's coming up you know between french and wimbledon you know the first week of grass courts i mean it's 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 tough it's tough to say what is right what is wrong because you know from grand slam from their perspective it was obviously right call because they're thinking about themselves but then you know the atp tours you know their tournaments they're going to suffer because of that so it's it's hard to say what is right what is wrong thank you we'll move to serbian press uh sasha Uh, ciao Nole, samo dok sam uključio snimak. Ciao Sale. Uh, lepo je videti te ponovo. Želim da te pitam u vezi, evo i na ovoj konferenciji si spomenuo i razgovarali smo mi već nekoliko puta koliko je utisalo na tebe to što se igra bez publike. I zanima me sada kad već imaš slično iskustvo gde se nisi baš najbolje osjećao, misliš li da će ti ono pomoći da sada ne izgubiš motivaciju i da igraš onako kako bi igrao da ima publike? To je jedno, a jedno ovako pitanje koje nije u vezi s terenom. Zanima me da nisi možda pogledao ovaj dokumentarac Si Spirasi, iako jesi tvoj komentar. Lepo je vidjeti i tebe, Sale, i tebe, Vuče. Ponovo, nedostaje mi je više tenis nego konferencije za štampu, ali nedostajali ste mi i vi. Definitivno uživam da pričam s vama najviše. Radujem se nastupu ovde u Monaku, ovo je moja trening baza poslednjih 15 godina. Duše poslednjih godinu i po dana nisam baš puno vremena prorodio ovde, ali sam vrlo dobro upoznat sa uslovima ovde u ovom klubu u koji inače često dolazim zbog svojih treninga. Uh, tako da je, je osjećaj poseban kada možeš da spavaš u svom krevetu i ovaj, sa svojom familijom, a, a da opet igraš turnir e, bukvalno iza ugla. Um, jeste da će biti drugačije bez publike i u pravu si prošle godine kada je sve to krenulo, kad sam igrao tih nekoliko dvoranskih turnira bez, bez publike, ovaj, imao sam onako malo i zasićenje i onako malo sam osjetio se de, demotivisanost. Uh, vidjet ćemo da li će mi pomoći ili ne to neko iskustvo ja ću se potruditi da, da budem pozitivan i kako da kažem i da sebe inspirišem i motivišem da, da igram ovaj, nezavisno od toga da li ima ili nema publike ali činjenica jeste da, da prosto je drugačije kako da kažem malo više sablasno ali s druge strane opet nisam ni igrao puno ove godine igrao sam u Australiji od tada nisam igrao jedan zvaničji meč, tako da ovaj, sam, uh, radujem se povratku, radujem se takmičenju i odatle ću da crpim tu energiju, kako da kažem, motivaciju ovaj, iz činjenice da sam stvarno inspirisan da se, da se ponovo nadmećem sa najboljima na svetu. Vuk? Uh, bilo je jedno pitanje, Saletu, ako ne grešim. Da li si gledao nešto, jel? Izvini, Sale, da, nisam gledao ovaj dokumentarac, nisam ga gledao, čuo sam, kad ga budem pogledao, eto, obavestit ću te šta misli. Super. Nole, naravno divno je vidjeti tebe, ti imaš dve svoje teniske rezidencije, to su Monte Carlo i Beograd. Na koji način su one slične? I na koji način ti zapravo sve ono što si doživio u Monte Carlo protiv godine predstavlja jednu inspiraciju u daljem strukturiranju Srbija Opena u narednim godinama? I samo još jedno kratko pitanje. Gufani bi upitan da li je tema vakcinacije nešto o čemu se priča u slačionicama? Pa eto, ako može samo komentar oko toga. Hvala ti. Uh, pa jeste, Monte Carlo mi je ovaj, uh, rezidencija i dalje i tu sam ovaj, poslednjih 15 godina najviše uh, vremena trenirajući proveo, pored Monte Carlo to je naravno Beograd i sad sve više u Beogradu, uh, što, što zbog akademije, što zbog toga što stvarno želim nekako da se, da se vratim i da su više vremena provodim u Srbiji, želim i za svoju decu da nekako više vremena provode u našem gradu, u našoj zemlji i ne može ni Monte Carlo, ni jedan drugi grad, niti zemlja da odmeni, da kako je da kažem, ovaj, se poredi sa Beogradom i sa Srbijom. Taj osjećaj koji imam kada sam tamo, to je to, je to, to je dom nekako u srcu koji, koji je uvek, uvek tu, nezamenjiv. Koncept akademije je trenutno u 
razvoju, to sam napomenuo, bio i poslednji put kada smo pričali, Ova, ima tu stvarno mnogo posla, sada nekako u, u čitavoj toj u čitavom tom procesu postavljanja tih temelja akademije koja će ovaj, sutra, ne kažemo sutra, u nekom, nekom ovaj, periodu u bliskoj budućnosti biti objavljena zvanično, ovaj, smo sada e, se zauzeli da organizujemo četiri turnira, zapravo Challenger i ATP e, za muške, Challenger i ovaj, e, e, isto 250 su za, za žene. Tako da ovaj, ima puno posla i e, većina ljudi koji su u centru akademiji su sada mobilisani za organizaciju turnira i samim tim će neke stvari malo da se odluže kad je akademija u pitanju, ali se paralelno sve to razvija. A, mnogo mi je drago što se turnir a, ATP 2020 se vrati u Beograd i što ćemo imati, ako se ne varam, prvi put i ženski turnir te kategorije u Beogradu. Tako da ovaj, mnogo, mnogo meni to znači kao teniseru ovaj, koji dolazi iz, iz zemlje, mogu slobodno da kažem, zemlje sporta i zemlje tenisa, jer u poslednji 15 godina smo imali zaista mnogo uspeha i sa, sa zaslogom mogu da kažem da je tenis jedan od popularnijih sportova. A, ali mora mnogo više da se uradi ovaj, kolektivno nekako na tom državnom nivou. Klubovi moraju mora da se radi sa klubovima da se ovaj, uloži u, 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 u čitav sistem postavljanja nekih temelja isto u sistemu teniskom, jer ono što je paradoksalno stvarno je da, da eto, nakon 15 godina svih uspeha koje smo mi imali individualno, kolektivno, da ovaj, tenis, kada, barem kada gledamo jedan podatak, umire u Srbiji, a to je količina prijavljenih zvanično takmičera u Teniskom savjezu Srbije. Ima ih manje od 2000, a bilo ih je 7-8 hiljada pre 10 i kusur godin. Tako da ovaj, to su stvarno neke onako začuđujuće činjenice. A, opet postoji više faktora i razloga zašto je to tako, naravno ekonomski, različiti ovaj, razlozi koji utiču na to, ali po meni najveći je onaj koji je zapravo nedostatak sistema, organizacije, mreže, klubova, nedostatak prosto organizovanosti, sve je sada nekako u Srbiji kada je tenis u pitanju više na pojedinačnom individualnom nivou, znači rad trenera jedan na jedan sa igračem i partizan, na primjer, klub u kojem sam odrastao i i igrao za taj klub mnogo puta je državna i ekipna prvenstva, ne, ne učestvuje recimo u ekipnom nacionalnom prvenstvu već dugi niz godin. Mislim, Partizan koji je, ne kažemo, i te, u tenisu, vjerojatno i najveći klub u, u državi, naravno pored zvezde kao u svim ostalim sportovima. Tako da, ovaj, to su neke onako, verovatno, stvari koje ljudi ne znaju, a koje su izuzetno bitne za budućnost našeg sporta, jer zapravo i, i, i Akademija Tipsarevića i Akademija Moja ovaj, sutra treba da se bavi tim pitanjima nacionalnim teniskim, ne samo onoga što, što, što se tiče nas u, u toj Akademiji, kako mi možemo da zajedno s Teninskim savezom doprinesemo ovaj, uspostavljanju neke ravnoteže, barem u tom kontekstu iz nekog sistema, ovaj, kako bi iznedrili neke nove šampione ovaj, i, i obezbedili neku budućnost uh, u tom kontekstu. Uh, iskustvo koje uh, imamo sa organizacijom uh, turnira između 2009. Uh, i 2012. 13. godine, znači četiri godine koliko smo imali 250 turnir, tu je bio u organizaciji moj stric, naravno otac i ovaj, dosta ljudi koji su i danas tamo i uh, to iskustvo može mnogo da nam pomogne sada i, i, i uh, Đole je moj brat direktor turnira, dosta je angažovan, vrlo je posjećen, imamo neka velika imena koja dolaze u, u Beograd, tako da za tu kategoriju su to zaista velika imena. Tako da, eto, nadamo se da možemo da rastemo kao turnir. Ovo je ipak specifična godina, nažalost, eto, ima ta loša vest je došla skoro da ne možemo imamo publiku, ali nadamo se da će sve to ovaj, biti malo drugačije u narednim godinama i da će ovaj, e, ljudi iz čitave Srbije regiona moći da vide, da vide najbolje tenisere na delu. Što se tiče tog drugog pitanja, da, ima e, razgovora dosta na tu temu. Ja sam baš danas pitao e, ovog jednog tur menadžera iz ATP-a da li interno u okviru asocijacije teniskih profesionalaca razgovaraju ovaj, o tome, oni aktivno razgovaraju o tome 
da, da li će dozvoljavati vakcinisanom igraču koji se jednom ili dva puta revakciniše, da li će mu dozvoliti da uh, bude lišen uh, ovih restrikcija koje ovaj, svi ostali koji se možda ne vakcinišu imaju. Uh, ali rekli su mi i takođe da rade na tome da da li bio igrač vakcinisan ili ne, uh, rade na tome da se popuste ove, ove restrikcije, barem u zemljama koje ne zahtevaju taj mehur, taj safe environment, kako ga već zovu, znači da svi budemo praktično zatvoreni i nekom karantinu. Jer ipak da, da to doživite jednom, dva put, kao što je to slučaj u Australiji i tako dalje, pa onda ajde da prihvatite, kažete, izdržat ću sada ovih nekoliko nedelja, u redu je. Međutim, cele godine zapravo su ta pravila. Cele godine svi igrači moraju da budu konstantno u karantinu i to mnogo utiče ne samo fizički, nego psihički i emotivno na igrače, evo, dosta nekih i top igrača se po, po, povlači s nekih turnira, je prosto ne mogu. Evo, ja sam, ja sam nisam želeo igra Miami, prosto je familijarni razlozi, ja ne mogu da prihvatam neke stvari koje, koje sam ranije prihvatao ovaj, u kontekstu provođenja tog kvalitetnog vremena sa familijom. Želim da budem tu, želim da budem otac koji je prisutan, muž koji je prisutan, a s ovakvim e, pravilima i restrikcijama konstantno smo u tom nekom ovaj, karantinu koji nas odlači pra, pra, prosto od, od, od svih tih nekih e, sloboda koje normalno svaki čovjek ima pravo da doživi. Tako da eto, mi se nadamo da će ovo biti sve kratkog daha, to smo rekli i pre šest meseci pa, pa, pa je malo potrebalo, eto, nadam se da će ipak ovoga puta sve to ovaj, brzo da se reši i da ćemo moći da imamo i publiku i da Barem igrači imaju mogućnost da prate, što je i logično, pravila lokalnih autoriteta. To je nešto što meni nije jasno zašto se postavljaju pravila od strane ATP-a da budete u, u, u tom nekom karantinu i tako dalje, ako u tim zemljama koje se odigraju turniri, oni to ne zahtevaju od vas. Eto, to mi je nekako nelogičnost. Ovaj, ali ajde, mislim, svako ima neke svoje poglede, svoje razloge, nadamo se nekim, brz, nekim promenama u pozitivnom smeru ovaj, uskoro. Thank you. Hvala puno.